so in this tutorial, we are going to learn how to put two parts together in an assembly. So first we're going to create a new assembly, name our part. The first part of making an assembly is you need to add your first component. So we're going to go up here to this assemble button to do that and add our first piece. I'm going to add uh, one of our Actobotics bars. You can change the view of the parts to see them better up here in views if you go to thumbnails. And then we can scroll through until we find the piece that we would like. I'm going to use this four hole bar for this tutorial. So we can double click it to open it. And now it's asking us to constrain it. So user defined, we can leave that here because this is going to be a non-moving part, it's just going to stay here. And over here, we have to set it to our default part. Since this is the first part we've put on the page, it needs to be our default because that will lock the model at 000, so that it can't go floating off into 3D space. So we need to set our first part as the default part to lock it in place. Once it turns orange, that means that it's fully constrained, and we can now click the check button because that piece has been placed. So to connect another piece to it, I'm going to add on edges so you can see it better. And I'm going to turn planes off. We are going to, I'm going to put another bar and lay it next to this bar. So we're going to assemble and it's already open on our four hole bar that we would like. So for this bar, we're going to make it, we're, this video is going to be about coincident restraints. So coincident means that the two faces are touching. So for example, if I click on this face, and this face and make them coincident up here, then that means that they are, the faces lie in the same plane. And we want to make sure that this part is fully constrained with these two pieces, which are flat. It's easy to do this using all coincident constraints, which are the easiest type of constraint. And we can, as you can see, it's not fully constrained right now. It can still move in this direction and it can move in that direction. So we want to constrain these faces so that they're coincident to each other. And as you can see, they are now in the same plane. And now, lastly, we want to constrain this face and this face so that they line up. And now that it's turned orange, you can see that the part is fully constrained. Another way we could have done constraining, so I'm going to X out and show another example of a different type of coincident. So if we assemble and add that part back, we can also con make constraints using the holes. So First, I'm going to put these faces coincident to each other so that we can see that. And then I'm going to drag this so that it's more obvious that it's not connected. And so we can make this hole coincident to this hole right here, which means that the centers of the holes will be aligned. As you can see right now, it just turned orange because it thinks it's fully constrained. It's actually not. It's not been constrained in this direction. So we're going to add one more constraint to it, which can easily be done with one of these other holes. To do this, once the part turns yellow, if you want to add another constraint, you have to go to Placement, click New Constraint, and then you can click on the model and constrain what you'd like. So we're going to constrain this hole to this hole, and that's just another easy way to use coincidence to constrain your part. 